everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning into my channel today. Today, I'm going to show you how to take pictures like this and like this using nothing more than the Google Pixel 6 Pro and a very simple tripod with a cell phone adapter like this. Stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, let me take just a couple of moments and to tell you a little bit about this phone and camera and, um, and tell you a little bit how it works. First of all, I bought this camera basically for three reasons. Number one, it was available. My Samsung Galaxy had given up the ghost and I needed a phone very, very quickly. And uh, when I went over to Best Buy, they didn't really have a great selection to choose from. And so I kind of started doing a little bit of research on what they already had. Second of a reason was it was cheaper than the other phones around there. It, it for the equipment that it had and for what it was what it had built into it, it seemed to me like to be a much better value than some of the other phones. Now that's a subjective thing. You can agree or disagree with that. That's the, but that was my decision making. Third, I had read a great deal about this camera and knew that it was an outstanding camera and that it was rivaling uh, the best on the market. And some have even said it is the best on the market. Now, the reason that was important for me is I'm a grandfather and I love to take pictures of my 10-month-old grandson and share them with my friends and my family members and put them on Facebook and let everybody know how cute my grandson is. I did not know that it had an astrophotography mode in it. That just sort of became icing on the cake. But because it was there, I decided to go out and give it a try. And I'll be honest with you, it absolutely blew me away. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the camera here. The camera, the front-facing camera here, is a 50 megapixel PD quad bear wide camera. Now, honestly, I don't know what all that means, except it takes really good pictures. Uh, the pixel width on it is 1.2 micron, which is a little bit small for what you do normally with astrophotography. If you were looking at my dedicated astrophotography cameras that I use, like the ZWO 533, I think that's a 3.75 um, uh, uh, micron pixel width. Um, I can't remember right off the top of my head what the uh, ZWO 183 is, but it's a little bit small. I don't want to get too technical here. Um, but it also does have built into it Google's own tensor processor, which allows you, allows you to have a lot of AI features and things that really help making photo processing very, very simple on this camera. And um, so I began to play around with it a little bit. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the astrophotography mode. The way that you get to it is by simply going to your regular camera and then sliding on this bottom section over here, you want to go all the way over to the left. Just kind of keep sliding it over to the left till you get to night sight. Now, once you have navigated to night sight, what you're going to need is to be have a way to keep the camera perfectly still. Now, you could do this by just leaning it against a book or a rock or something like that. What I chose to do was to use a very inexpensive photography tripod with a adapter for a cell phone on it. Now, this actually belongs to the church that I pastor, and uh, we use this to film uh, some of our Sunday school um, uh, classes and to uh, our Bible studies and stuff like that, where we're not going to use a real expensive camera, just a basic uh, cell phone, and it works very, very good. And what you do is simply mount your cell phone on like this, and then you can sit behind it and you can move it around with the handle. That's going to give you a nice secure base. You will not be able to get to the astrophotography mode unless two things happen. Number one, the camera must be stable. It cannot be moving around. So it's going to have to either be leaning against something and secure or it's going to have to be in a tripod. Number two, it has got to be dark. Once those two criteria are met, what will happen is on the phone, where you click to start the exposure, when you first go to night mode, it will form a little crescent moon. 
But once it's stable and focused, it will switch over to stars. And that's when you know you are in astrophotography mode. Now, what it's going to do then is when you click to start the exposure, it is going to take four minutes to, to complete the picture. Now, what it's doing in that process is taking 12 15 second long exposures. And then it's going to use its software to align each one of those pictures. Now, the reason that's important is the night sky is moving. So the objects that we're looking at are actually moving slowly across the night sky. And if you take much longer of an exposure than that, you're going to get star streaks. So the way the phone compensates for that is what we as astrophotographers call stacking. It's going to take shorter images and it's going to stack them one on top of each other. And when you're done, it is going to give you a picture. From there then, it's going to give you a number of tools built into the phone that you can use to process it. For instance, you can go over and increase the brightness or you can increase the contrast. Black level, you can bring out more saturation, and you can customize the picture to look just the way that you want it to. Now, what I found is it's a little bit more um, uh, powerful to actually take the picture over to Lightroom and then be, a, if you have Adobe Lightroom, to be able to take it over there and make some adjustments. Now, both of those options give you something that I want to suggest that you try out. And it will give you suggestions based on artificial intelligence. Now, I'm not a great fan of artificial intelligence because I don't understand it. But what it does is it looks at that picture and it compares it to a library of other pictures. And it gives you suggestions about how you might want for your picture to be processed. And I found that just using some very basic tools there, you can get some really, really great pictures. Let's take a couple of moments and let me take, let you look at the pictures I've taken. Then we'll come back and I'll give you the pros and the cons to this setup. Okay, well, in my opinion, uh, this thing takes some really neat pictures. And I think that this is a good way, if you're wanting to get started into astrophotography, this is a very simple and very easy way to do it, especially if you already have this phone or you have another phone that has this kind of capability. This is a really easy way to get started in taking pictures of the night sky. Also, if you're an astrophotography, uh, astrophotographer like I am, that has thousands of dollars worth of equipment sitting in your in your uh, house. I've got two astrophotography rigs, one with an eight inch telescope, the other with an 80 millimeter telescope. I've got dedicated astrophotography cameras, but this gives me a supplement to those. This gives me something that while I'm taking a nine or 10 hour long exposure of a close up galaxy with my big eight inch telescope, this gives me something I can sit and just take some wide fields and get some pretty neat uh, pictures. It's also great for what I like to call at landscape astrophotography. And that's where you're going out and you're capturing something in the foreground, maybe like the trees in some of my pictures there or the houses or the neighborhood that sits across the way from me. Um, this allows you to capture them with a star field above them. One of the things I want to do is here near where I live, there are some ancient Mississippian uh, mounds uh, that where they had built the Mississippian culture out here. And, and it's really neat. Uh, it's called Kincaid Mounds. And I want to go out there one evening and take some pictures of the night sky over top of those mounts. I don't know how well it'll come out, but it's a different kind of astrophotography. Okay, so let me give you some of the cons to this first, and then I'm going to give you the pros. The, the cons for this kind of setup is, first of all, that the sensor on a cell phone camera, as good as a camera as this is on the Google Pixel 6 Pro, it's still much smaller than what you'd have on a DSLR. 
So if you're doing this and you're taking wide field pictures of the night sky, there is no doubt at some point you will want to move to a DSLR. Or if you're wanting to take close-up pictures of galaxies, planets, um, other kinds of nebula, you're going to want to probably go to an, a dedicated astrophotography setup. Um, because the, it, th this is just kind of a small sensor for that. Um, you're also limited to the one and two times zoom on this. And the other thing, another con, you can't add filters to this. So for instance, normally when you're shooting something like a nebula in astrophotography, we use a variety of different filters, narrow band filters that allow us to filter out all of the other light that we don't want and just capture the bandwidth of the light that we do want. So for instance, I do a lot of imaging in HA and O3. Those are narrow bands of light uh, that come with ionized hydrogen and ionized oxygen. And those are two big components in nebula. You can't add that on here. You can't do that with this. And so, you know, that's not going to be as, as um, you're, you're going to be limited with this um, and probably want to move on to a DSLR at some point. It's also kind of susceptible to lens flare and glare from other light sources. Now, that's true even of my bigger set, uh, my bigger setups. I have a Celestron 8-inch telescope that I've got to put a big um, shield on that's about two and a half feet long to kind of keep the light from my neighbor's houses from reflecting off the inside of the optical tube and creating a lot of glare. Um, you can't do that with this. Now, you might be able to build some little box contraption around it or something. I found that when I took pictures, I even had to turn the... Um, the brightness down on the screen. I found my pictures came out much better when I turned the brightness of the screen way down because this camera is super sensitive and any light around it is going to cause a little bit of lens flare and a little bit of a glare on it. Now, those are the cons. Let me give you the pros. And I, and I think the pros, quite frankly, outweigh the cons on this if you're new to astrophotography and you're looking for a simple way to get in. It is super easy to take some pretty impressive pictures with something that you may already own. So if you've already got this phone, by all means, spend the extra $50, get you a little tripod like this, and get out there under the night sky and take some pretty cool pictures. If your child wants to get involved in astrophotography, this is a great simple way to get in if they already own the phone. I don't know that I would go out and buy this camera just for the astrophotography mode, okay? That's between you and 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 your budget and, um, and how you'd want to do it. But I don't know that I would do that. But because I have it, I'm going to use it quite a bit. Um, it also has some powerful editing tools built in to the software of the phone. And it also uses artificial intelligence. Now, I think that is a pro because I see this as an entryway into astrophotography, not as the end. OK, and so, you know, it's taken me uh, a couple of years to learn how to do the processing that I do of my astrophotography images uh, using software like Photoshop, AstroPixel Processor, Serial, um, other things that I use uh, to process my pictures. You don't really have to do that with this setup. If you're looking to get into this hobby quick and easy, this is an easy way to do it. It has a lot of built-in software. You can take it over, take your pictures over, save them either in RAW or JPEG. But if you want to take them over to, to other software, save them in RAW format, and that builds some flexibility in this. You could take this over and work with it in Photoshop. All in all, I'm amazed at what you can do with this, and I'm looking forward to doing even more. Uh, I think if I could get out under some really dark skies, I'm under Bortle Class 5 skies, which means I'm kind of in a suburban area, it would say. And so I have a lot of light pollution around me. It's hard to see the night sky real well because of that. But if I got out into some darker skies, I think this thing picture, this camera could take some amazing pictures of the Milky Way, 
uh, perhaps even maybe capturing some other stuff. I got a picture the other night where you can just barely see it, but Andromeda is in one of the pictures. You, it's not very big. Like I said, it's not zoomed in. It's not the kind of picture I take with my telescope, but it's there. And so um, this is a good option. If you already have the phone or you're going to get the phone, make sure that you pick up a tripod like this and get out there under the night sky and give it a try. All right. Thanks for tuning in today. I am the Digital Astronomer. If you enjoyed this, please do me a favor. I'm almost up to 1,000 subscribers. My, my goal for 2021 has been to get to 1,000 subscribers. Help me to do that by clicking on subscribe. And also, if you enjoyed it, please click on the like button and consider sharing it with your friends to help me build the channel. And especially share it if you have someone that you know that has the Google Pixel 6 Pro or Google Pixel 6, make sure you share this video with them so that they can see how to do some astrophotography with it. Thank you for tuning in.